So we got this f interview courtesy of Hype Beast featuring the one and only Peggy Goo, you know, my favorite DJ of all time. And I thought it was somewhat interesting in the fact that it just, for me, cemented my impression that I think as much as it is fun to hate on the lady, I also think it's quite fun to be her number one defender now. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pivot and I'm going to be the defender of Fred again. <laughs> and I'm going to be the defender of Peggy Goo. Two people at the flipping apex, right? At the top of flipping Mount Kilimanjaro when it comes to flipping DJing. Um, incredibly privileged. They probably wouldn't spit on me if I was on fire. They probably would step over me if I fell over in the queue somewhere. Like, they probably don't give any fucks about me whatsoever. But I think the hate towards both of them is a little bit exaggerated a little bit over the top especially when it comes to Peggy Goo because I think as fun as her life may be she looks amazing in this picture here courtesy of Hypebeast dressed in this amazing fur number that probably is real fur designer glasses great facials tattoos and cool jewelry and all that malarkey right all this is amazing but I also think being Peggy Goo is a prison in its own self because of how famous and popular she is it must be pretty pretty crazy to be her because it's not a normal life that normal DJs have she's basically occupying this weird celebrity influencer um IG babe sort of like place it's bizarre but anyway the interview itself is very very bland and very boring I'm not gonna lie you don't really get much out of her um I don't know if this is because she's kind of guarded because of the hate and doesn't want to reveal too much about her story or because of her upbringing or inspiration just her personality because people dissect everything she says i've done it in the past i know but maybe that's it or maybe she just doesn't have much to say she might be legitimately dense and quite you know basic in one way shape or form or just have the personality of a cardboard box i don't know but it must be such a weird place to be in because she's very clearly photogenic clearly doesn't shy away from taking pictures so when it comes to that the kind of other thing that comes on the back end is people wanting to know more about you, interview you, find out what makes you tick and stuff, but she doesn't really have anything. There's not really much there to kind of pull from. I'll just I'll just read a few, in, 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 you know, of the interview here, because of a hype beast um, of her being in the career. The interview. How was this? How was um, the experience of DJing in Korea for the first time? She says, it was more than I expected. In order to resonate with the audience in Korea, I had to play music differently than what I would do in foreign countries. As I watched the audience reaction, I was excited thinking about how Korean house and techno are getting a lot bigger. I was also performing with my favourite artists, so I was feeling a lot of emotions. Doesn't this sound like a chat GBT question or something? This sounds very AI-ish, isn't it? It's lacking in depth, lacking in warmth or emotion. It's just very robotic. And again, maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know. Another question here. In terms of fashion, what do you want to show the audience at your live show? bizarre but hey it's a dj but hey she answers i think my performance includes costumes i want to deliver at, um, energy at the same time so i wear a lot of different clothes a different colored clothes a lot of people think that my clothes are chosen by stylists but i wear whatever i want it all depends on the store country the timing the festivals i also choose the energy that i think that suits the city and the situation it's like huh come on lady give us something brother give us something sister as the day goes on my suitcase get bigger and bigger and it's hard people who like techno sometimes only wear black but i think you can wear color colorful colors while playing techno okay <laughs> it's like come on girl give us something please um the, another question here the word colorful is something that you're um is something of a defining term throughout your music and stage presence sometimes people ask me to define my style <laughs> every time i say no i'm pretty much where my styles of my many i wear all styles of clothing it's the same when you're making music i draw from everything i'm making k house indie techno with my music and all kinds of genre elements but yeah an absolute wall of nothingness coming from Peggy Goody. And again, I don't know if it's because she purposely doesn't want to let anything out of the bag because people just dissect everything she says or because she generally doesn't have much of a personality. But I think one of my reasons why I'm starting to warm to her is number one, she doesn't seem to give a shit about the criticism, which I love. She just seems to kind of just keep, keep on keeping on. And I also have never, ever, 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 ever seen this girl moan about playing the same track 
again and again and again every time she performs and the track that i'm talking about is flipping starry starry night i think i've got a clip of it here right where she's performing it somewhere where is it maybe is it this maybe it's this one maybe it's this one no i think it's this one might be this is this one or this one maybe it's this one yeah this is the one so she played recently i think this is maybe at the place where she was at the interview um this is says um peggy Goo live at ufo station in seoul and for the one millionth time she's out here playing starry night in front of a crowd of people who are just standing looking at her there's no real dancing there's no real going crazy they're just standing and staring at her as she's playing music as a dj it must be such a weird feeling to have to experience where no one's dancing no one's losing their heads and going crazy they're just standing and looking at you like you're in a band or something it's really bizarre but i've never heard her complain once about the success of the tune and about the golden handcuffs that's basically given her she loves it she plays it every time she plays it, it's like the first time she did it and she approaches it like a true professional like a true musician you know turns up does a job collects her checks and keeps it moving but let's hear the clip screaming but they're not dancing it's such a weird sensation to see if you're not watching this they're screaming but they're not dancing they're literally all standing there with their hands in the air with their phones no dancing and she's acting like this is the first time that like she just made a tune this is what i think about what peg is a pro she's acting as if she just she just mixed and mastered the tune in her hotel room and is debuting it for the first time i flipping love it <laughs> At least they're singing along though. Imagine singing along and not dancing. What kind of crowd is this? <laughs> it's incredible. Imagine singing along and not dancing. This is incredible. Or maybe this is just soul life, isn't it? Maybe this is just how Koreans get down when it comes to house music. They're singing but they're not dancing. This is so bizarre. <laughs> She's playing it like it's the first time. She's being a complete pro. No messing around. And then the other video that I went to show you that really demonstrated why sometimes, you know, maybe being Pegu isn't what it's all cracked up to be. Look at this clip taken from Mykonos last year. People just literally standing behind her and in front of her this is a bit of a dodgy setup anyway i don't know what kind of setup this is this is probably be my nightmare of djing place as a venue it looks like the the crowd are like around her so kind of like a boiler room type of crowd where she's like in the middle and everyone's sort of like around usually the people behind you are kind of vips and stuff and they don't really act too fanny so you can kind of make you chill but everyone around there's a fan so everywhere she turns there's people shining their phones in her face but again Consumer Pro doesn't roll her eyes once, doesn't look annoyed once, and just goes with it, which you can definitely appreciate. But this doesn't look like fun to me. So for the people out there hating and saying, oh, she gets paid so much money from Nike and all this stuff, would you want this as a DJ career for you? Be honest. And would you also be able to perform and not be complaining online? Because you don't hear her complaining and, you know, moaning about flights and stuff. She just lives it, does her thing, keeps it moving. Look at the phones. Phones in the back. More phones. Phones everywhere. Look at the phones. Camp, there's an SLR. Look, absolute pro. She's walking around like it's the first time she's played the song. I can't get past how amazing this is. <laughs> And I'm sure Record Box has like a play count option. I'm sure in the list setting, in the what view section or something. I'd love to see how many times her particular USB has played Starry Night. It must be in the hundreds of thousands. It must be. Anyway, you get the point. And then 
this video I thought was really hilarious because this is the only one I could find where she does look a little bit annoyed and doesn't really look like she wants to be there. And this is a clip taken from um, the channel called Luca Dia, which basically fo focuses more on like the tech house type of scene, loads of what you maybe call bro house or something. So loads of dudes, loads of Italians and whatnot, dancing around, twirling their fingers and whistling all the time. So if you don't like that kind of vibe, you won't like this. But she's performing at Circo Loco DC 10 alongside Michael Bibby. I don't think they're going back to back. I think he just played before her and she's playing after her, after him, sorry, um, which is funny because I don't think she's really a fan of the guy probably, but hey, maybe the feeling's mutual. But this is the only clip I can find where she doesn't look like she's really that pleased to be there. And it might just be more so to do with the crowd um, and also all, all the hangers on behind in the booth of DC10. I'm not really too sure, but she doesn't look too happy to be there. But still, she, you know, turns on the game face, starts dancing and relaxes. But the first few bits, you can see her not looking too happy. So this is a clip. Let's play it now. <laughs> See in the back there with her headphones trying to get the song going. Michael Bibby not really giving her much attention. Let's pass forward a little bit more. Effects going on there. Slight interaction with each other here, but still. Just a whole bunch of lads in it. DC 10 god damn I would still like to go just for the experience just to see what it's like in person but god almighty the amount of lads the amount of arms in the air you must come when you come back from DC 10 your arms are just so sore from just having them in the air with your phone recording every single bit and what where, where does all this footage end up I don't even see it where does it end up does it end up on YouTube does it go on their flipping Instagram channels like where does this stuff end up I want to know where does this stuff go but anyway all these sea of arms all these sea of dudes maybe Maybe this is why she wasn't too pleased because there was so many Caucasian people there. She didn't see enough of her own people. I'm not really too sure. Who knows? Absolutely rammed. Oh, there's some girls there. Okay, nice to see. So it's, this is a good thing about Peggy. She does have a pretty decent following with the with, with the ladies. They do seem to like her quite often. I remember in the workplace I worked at beforehand, um, no, a couple of years ago, a lot of the girls there loved Peggy. They literally, you know, they, they didn't really go raving too often, but if she were if she was playing in London, they'd always buy tickets to go and see her and they get all dressed up and shit. So she's clearly got a really big, big, big fan base with the women's. Michael Baby's still not giving her much attention. They're still not talking. They're still not talking. Not talking again. Still not talking. Let's see, fast forward a bit more. Still not talking. Nothing anymore there. Two minutes since the no interaction. <laughs> yeah, see? The only time I've seen her look a little bit down and glum. Maybe she's really tired from traveling. Okay, there we go. A little bit of interaction there. She smiled at him, talked to her friend. She pointed one at him, she looked away. <laughs> She doesn't seem the most warm, does she? <laughs> I still love her though. Peggy's my girl. I'm going to protect you all at all costs, my dear. The hate towards you is a little bit unwarranted. You do your job and you're professional. And I mean, that's that, That's more than a lot of people in the scene. And even if you are a little bit of a C-U-N-T, so what? There's many of them out there. Do you know what I mean? That could, many more that have kind of people that kind of rate and flipping, you know, lick their boots and fall over the floor for. If you are, well, so what? Do it. Okay, 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 there we go, one more. The only interaction. One more. What happens here? I want to see where they switch. Is that where they switch? Let's see where they switch. Oh, there we go. Now is she happy? Rah, she spoke to him once the whole time they switched. Okay, they're speaking now. Okay.
<laughs> she doesn't seem too warm, does she? <laughs> Peggy doesn't seem like the warmest person in the world, but hey, I still appreciate the lady. Okay, they're switching now. There's still loads of arms in the air. Not a lot of dancing. There we go. She started. She feels good. Okay. Anyway, that's Peggy Goo over there at Circo Loco. Feeling good, feeling nice. Michael Bibby probably looking at her thinking, bloody hell, mate, you're a little bit cold, aren't you, babes? <laughs> Come on, Han. What did you say? What do you call me, babes? I'm not your babes. You know, she probably didn't respond too well with that. But hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. The Peggy Goo Defence Force is here. We're defending her at all costs. We're defending her at all flipping costs. 